So yesterday um, we were looking at going in the reverse order. If I if I tell you the factor form, you are accustomed to being able to say the zeros. And then yesterday we said, what if I told you the zeros? Then you should be able to say, oh, well then here's the factors. Right? Remember that? This is really important because this ties into form four, which we're starting today. So make sure you understand this little relationship right here, how to go left or right from this information and what it means. Roots, zeros, means solutions where it's crossing the x-axis, okay? Then we looked at um, long division. When you are given a factor and you're asked to determine if that factor or, well, you're given an expression. You're asked to determine if it is a factor of a polynomial. And the concept is the same thing as you're just dividing it into it to see if you get a nice zero remainder. If you get a zero remainder, it is a factor, and you have to write it as the product of the two. The factor you divided, what you got when you divided it, plus the zero remainder. The green part, right here was where I was saying at the very, very, very beginning, because this is stressful, you can know the answer if it's going to work or not by simply taking the zero from the factor and plugging it into the polynomial and seeing if you get the number zero. Because if you get the number zero, that means it is a zero, a solution, which means when you go through the factoring process, the division, you will come to a zero remainder. If you don't get the number zero, you should see the remainder you will get when you go through the long division. They're directly connected, okay? Um, so use the little green, like, it's not a shortcut, but it's just kind of a, you know, you feel safer knowing going through the problem if you already know the answer. Um, so use that to your advantage. You still have to know how to do long division, especially with what's coming in 4 5. You've got to be able to do long division because at some point in 4 5, I'm going to say, hey, I need you to tell me the answer to this question, and the answer comes from that part right there. So you've got to be able to do long division. Now, which brings us to this part, the remainder theorem, and then what's called synthetic division. The remainder theorem is what I just showed you in green. The shortcut is if you had just plugged the zero in to the original polynomial, whatever you get is the remainder you're going to get when you do the long division. That's what the remainder theorem says. So that is this right here in the fancy terminology of that that I already showed you. Okay. So make sure you keep this in the back of your mind because it's a nice little way to know that you're doing it right. Because the remainder theorem exists and works every time, it helps streamline the division process, which brings in what's called synthetic division. Synthetic division is, like my shoes, Hey, nobody would know I'm not wearing $800 Golden Goose shoes unless they absolutely own the pair, right? There's 60. Synthetic division is a fake way to divide. Um, it works. When I first show it to you, you're probably going to be like, I, would, I do not understand how she did that. Then I'll show you a second example, and you might be like, okay, not bad. Then I'll show you a third example, and I think you're going to actually appreciate it, okay? Um, synthetic division is a very, very quick way to divide, and you're not actually dividing. So let's look at the question. It says, use synthetic division to find the quotient and the remainder, which means, hey, divide this crap and tell me what's left over. What did I say yesterday that did not happen yesterday, but at the very beginning I said, watch out, check for gaps. So make sure right here, check for gaps. What do I mean 
mean by gaps? Look at that first polynomial. 2x cubed plus 7x squared minus 5. 2x cubed plus 7x squared. There, there you go. There's an x missing here. So that means that its coefficient had to be 0. So plus 0x minus 5 is the actual polynomial. Of course, I'm dividing it by x plus 3. Okay, so just like yesterday, just pencil down and then watch me and be ready to just watch what I'm pointing to, listen to the words I'm saying, and then I'll let you copy it down, and then of course we'll try it again, and we'll try it again, and then we're done with this, this uh, section. So the idea is, what's nice about synthetic division is all of the variables are gone don't have all of these variables in here. We focus on just the numbers. The way you set it up, when you, I'm going to copy right here and then I'm going to use dividing. Okay, so if I'm dividing by x plus 3, then what zero comes out of that? Negative 3. So if this is going to work, then negative 3 would be the zero, right? So just watch, don't copy. I'll make some notes, draw an arrow. This is the possible zero. That came from this right here. All right, so the synthetic division bar, or setup, I guess you could say, looks like this. Now, the way it's set up is, I'm fixing to align the numbers here that come from the large polynomial. This box over here represents where I should end my remainder. And you have to, you want to line it up to where your constant lines right up over that. So I'm going to pull all the coefficients. So I've got 2, 7, space it out, 0, negative 5. Do you see how I got that? Those numbers. But now do you see why the zero is important? There'd be a whole column missing if you forgot that gap. And then the whole everything after is wrong. Alright. The starting, like it's a domino effect, I guess you could say, but the starting process is this first coefficient just comes straight down. It just comes straight down. I always draw the arrow, even looking at all my examples. I still draw the arrow to this day to remind me, hey, pull this down, and then here we go. It's a matter of multiplication and adding, okay? So you're going to multiply negative 3 times 2, what do you get? You're going to put it right here, you're going to add straight down. Repeat, negative 3 times 1, you're going to put it here, you're going to add straight down. Repeat, negative 3 times negative 3, you're going to add straight down. done with the synthetic division. Now, what do you do with it? Okay, so come back to the, the small example where I said 4 divided into um, uh, we'll just do 12. 4 divides into 12 how many times? 3. Remainder of what? 0. Okay. We broke 12 down into 4 times 3, correct? Okay, so we just broke this polynomial down into x plus 3 times this. This is your remaining polynomial. Come back over here. Remember that part? Okay, that is the exact same thing as this. It's just now you've got to go back and put it with the letters, the variables. So. And you always have to remind yourself, the idea is division breaks it down, right? What did it start as? It started as a cubic. You just divided into it an x to the first power, which means this will be one less and start at a quadratic. Does that make sense? 
You would not write 2x cubed here because then that doesn't make sense that I just divided a cubic by a linear and I ended with a cubic. That, it doesn't make sense. It's always one less degree than what it started as. So I'm going to write that over here, 2x squared plus 1x minus 3. That's my polynomial. My remainder, though, was a number other than 0. So I'm going to put plus my remainder. Now, if you recall this from middle school, you have to say that that remainder actually still needs to be divided by that ugliness, but we're not worried about it. So you write, this is like the special context. Let me change colors. This is the remainder over the divisor um, at the end. This is what you actually got right here. Let me make another note. On arrow, translate into a polynomial with one less degree. Okay, so this question was, hey, I just want you to divide it and tell me what's left over. That's the only purpose of this question. So I just divided it, I wrote what was left over, and then that's the remainder over the divisor. So in the My Math Lab, this would be the answer. Now I'm going to let you copy it all down. Oh, and I'm going to put an R right here. Now don't, don't judge synthetic division off the first example. Give me, give me a couple of examples before you make your decision on it. So looking at the next question, um, it says, given this polynomial, find f of 10. Please don't overthink that. What do you think it means? Plug it in. Just plug it in. This question is just to remind you. Hey, don't forget that if I say find f of 10, that means plug 10 in where x is and tell me what you get. Should get 170,000. 
Okay, so we change colors from purple. This question was, hey, divide it and write it. That was it. The purpose of that question was, let me throw something at you. I just want you to divide it one time, and then I want you to tell me what you did. I want to see if you know how to write the correct formatting for what remainder is left. This next question, notice it says, determine whether 5 is a 0 of g of x. It says, determine whether 5 is a 0 of g of x. So this question is taking it past dividing it. Now it means something. Like after you divide it, what you get means something here. What you got meant nothing. This was just, do you know how to divide it? You may or may not get an ugly answer. This is, now you know what it means when you divide it and end with zero. So let's change the colors. Determine whether five is a zero of g of x. Remember what I said when they say the word zero, they're saying what? Solution. Is 5 a solution? What is the fast checkpoint to know if it's a solution? Plug it in. Plug it in, and what are you looking to get? Zero. Okay, so you could do this real quick and know your answer before you actually do what it's asking you to do. So if I say check if 5 is a 0, that means I'm saying check for if it's a solution, and you're just going to find, is it G? of 5, which is why that last question was there, to remind you to just plug it in. What do you get when you plug 5 in? You get 0. Okay, so because we get 0, right, I'm going to even come right here, since g of 5 equals 0, then 5 is a 0. Now I've got to actually do the math, though. Here's what it looks like with synthetic division when one of the numbers is a 0. First of all, look at your polynomial. Well, you know this a lot of gaps. Let's fill the gaps in. So this is actually g of x equals x to the fourth what? Zero, right? Zero x cubed minus 26x squared. Zero x and then plus 25. Okay, here's your second chance to watch the synthetic division. You want to just put your pencil down and watch. We're checking 5, right? Know the difference between the word it's a 0 or it's a factor. If it's a factor, it's a binomial with some type of x, right? And you have to pull the zero out of that. That's where the negative three came from. This is different. They are not giving you the factor. They're straight up saying, hey, check this number and see if it's a zero, which means there's no pulling, there's no change in the sign, there's no that. I am checking the number five. So make sure you know the difference between when you take the factor and pull the zero out, or when you are given a zero and that's the number you run with. See the difference? Okay, so because that is a zero, it goes right on the outside of my little box. 
And obviously, I got a bunch of terms here, so I got to make room for five terms. So what I tend to do is draw it really long, and then I just close it off. Now you're going to get your numbers across the top row by pulling the coefficients from those terms. So we've got 1, 0, negative 26, 0, and 25. Line up your last one over your remainder box. Now it's set up. I draw the arrow to remind me, hey, this is where I start. I pull that down. And now it's a matter of multiply, add, multiply, add. So here we go. 5 times 1, write it here, add. Repeat. 5 times 5, write it here, add. Repeat. 5 times negative 1, add. Repeat. 5 times negative 5, So that's what it looks like when you're doing synthetic division with a zero that has that is an actual zero, which means the remainder comes to the number zero. So I don't know if you want to make a note. The five was a zero, you know, compared to that last problem where it was x plus three and we had to pull the negative three. So make sure you just pay attention to, you know, when you're pulling a number from it or when you're using the actual number they gave you. Okay, which leads right into the next part, which is taking us into today's lesson, the factor theorem. The factor theorem, you already, you already know this, it's just you haven't seen the, the fancy theorem. For any number that you plug into a function, if you end up with zero, that meant it's a zero, right? It's a solution, which means that it comes from a factor that you can write. So this goes back to that first slide where I said, hey, if I give you these zeros, you can say then here are the factors. Remember that first slide? Um, so this is the factor theorem. This is saying if you, if you take any number, plug it into the function, and you get zero, then you can say it comes from a factor. So for instance, I plugged 5 in, right? I plugged 5 in, I got 0, I showed through synthetic division, it works, so 5 is a 0. This down here is saying, well, if 5 is a 0, then x minus 5 is a factor. That's what this is saying. If you know a number is a 0, then you can say, well, here's its factor then. Now, you might be wondering where I got x minus 5. If you, if you struggle with getting that in your head, then say to yourself, if x equals 5 is a 0, subtract, then you see the factor. You see what I mean? You just subtract everything to the left and you'll see the factor. So x minus 5 is the factor. <coughs> okay, let's practice synthetic division one more time before we start 4-4. Four, four. And I'm going to pull, I don't know why that is so high. There we go. All right, so look at this one. That's why it's so high. I'll copy it this way. So I'll put this back up. Okay. Let f of x equal this.
this function, factor f of x and solve the equation. Okay, so this is what we're getting to. We're getting to where I give you a polynomial and you solve it. And it's a higher degree polynomial. It's not just a quadratic. We're past quadratics. We're in college. Um, so it's a higher degree polynomial and you have to solve it algebraically without your graphing calculator. Um, so the idea here is, and I'm going to, in the next section, I think it's the next section, I'm going to show you a shortcut so this doesn't feel so wide open, like I'm just throwing the polynomial at you and I'm asking you to solve it. In the next section, I'm going to teach you something that kind of gives you a starting point with numbers, so you're not just picking a random number out of thin air. This right here, going back to this theorem, is can you just pick a random number, plug it in, and see if you get zero? Because if you do, then it is a zero, which means it's one of its solutions, right? What number do you want to randomly pick? What do you think? So oh, easy. Pretty. Yeah. One. I would try zero. one. I would try one. Well, you know zero is not going to work because look, if you plug zero in, you'll be left with eight. So you know zero is not going to work. So you could check zero, because zero is potentially a zero in the end of polynomial. But you can check that one with your eyes. Let's check one. So I'm going to say check x equals one. How can I check it real quick to know if it's a zero? Just plug it in. So we're going to find f of one. Because we got zero, I'm going to put a little check mark. This means winner, winner, chicken dinner, we're going to run with one. Okay? No, it's not enough to just say, oh, one of the answers is one and be done. They want us to actually solve the whole thing, which means we need a list of solutions to this problem. Right? Okay, go back to what we've talked about. Look at the leading term. How many possible solutions are there? There's up to three. And you know that because of this right here. This tells me there's up to three zeros. Well, you just found one of them, right? So let's come over here with our little list and let's make a note that we just found one. How am I going to get the rest of them? I'm going to take the one, do synthetic division into that, and see what I end up with, because I, I should end up with a quadratic, and everybody in here should know how to solve a quadratic. So we're going to set up synthetic division with the number 1. Do we have any gaps? No. So what are my numbers across the top? Okay. All right, everybody try the synthetic division on your own. Let's see if you get it. You should come to a remainder of zero because we said at the very beginning that uh, that number one works.
right, so draw your line, draw your arrow, and then we start. Multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. Okay, so recall that it started as a cubic, you just divided a linear uh, binomial into it, so this comes out as a quadratic, so I'm going to come right underneath. So 1x squared minus 2x minus 8. We have no remainder, and we're trying to solve this. Now it's going to pull all of your knowledge of solving quadratics. Let's make a note. We'll change to green here. Recall the ways to solve a quadratic. The very first way, which is the easiest, which which is what we end up doing the majority of the time, is factoring. Most of them will factor. However, quadratic formula does come in a couple of times where it will not factor. You do have to write it out as a quadratic formula. And then I think once or twice, you actually can solve by square roots because the middle term is gone. But remember, that only works when, that's only when it's like x squared and then a number. There's no, there's no vx term by square roots. Majority of the time, it's factoring or quadratic formula. So we need to solve this. Okay, so we've got a times c, right? a times c is negative 8. Factors of negative 8 that add up to negative 2. Negative 4 and 2. And I'm going to go to my fraction. What did we say? Yeah, we call it, did we call it the fraction method? Where you write ax and then the number, and then you divide out a GCF. But because a is 1, there's no GCF to divide out, so it's going to go straight to parentheses. So ax number, ax number. Got something times something equals zero. You should know where this is going. This should be second nature by now. Which is why I love this stuff because we're layering the stuff you already know. So the only new part was the very beginning. All right, so what are our solutions? We got one, four, and negative two. And you could. Go to the polynomial and plug those numbers in to confirm that they are solutions. Don't worry about that extra example. Um, you can go to that space below this box. I want to show you an example that is going to possibly come up in number 12 in the homework. When you are doing synthetic division, with an imaginary number, don't forget the rules of imaginary numbers here. So let me just show you this one. Where you want to make this one spaced out. Um, imaginary numbers and real numbers are not like terms. Okay? Um, you can multiply any two numbers together, but you cannot add any two numbers together. That's the problem. So when you have a synthetic division with an imaginary part, which this goes right into 4, 4, 
Watch how you do this. This comes down. Everything is the same. The problem is when we add, we're going to end up with two terms because they're not alike. All right, so 2i times 1 is 2i, right? Add straight down. They are not alike, so you have to just shove it together. The middle part comes first. So this would be negative 4 plus 2i. Now you can see where this is going to start getting. You kind of have to go like over to the side and do it, and then you come back and put it in. Now we're going to multiply 2i times negative 4 plus 2i. Right? So that's negative 8i. What's 2i times 2i? 4i squared, right? What did I tell y'all to do when you have an I squared? I said circle the whole part, the sign, the number, the I squared, because what does that actually do? It becomes, it, it's the equivalent of 4 times negative 1, which is negative 4. So when I come right here to write what I get, this is actually negative 8i minus 4, but you need to put the real part first. It's only one of these. So this would be negative 4 minus 8i. Now the nice thing here is when I add that straight down, what happens with the 4s? They actually cancel. And you're left with negative 8i. Do you see that? So this one's not that bad. 2i times negative 8i, so I'm going to come over here so I don't mess up, 2i times negative 8i would be negative 16i squared, which is actually 16. And then remainder 0. So I wanted you to have that on your paper. Um, number 12, that's going to come up. So now you, you can see. No, 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 no. Um, on this one, you look. This one's just, is it a zero? This was just a yay or nay, is it a zero? And so you go through this. No, 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 no. You, because these are imaginary, you can't translate that to a polynomial. This was just a, can you do a synthetic division with an ugly complex number? That's what that was. All right, we're done with 4-3. Okay, so we're Yeah, I gotta put holes in it.